The Merry Adventures of Robin Hood by Howard Pyle Chapter 1 Robin Hood Becomes an Outlaw In Merry England in olden times, when good King Henry ruled the land, there lived in the green glades of Sherwood Forest, near Nottingham, a famous outlaw named Robin Hood. No archer ever lived who could shoot an arrow with such skill, and there never were such yeomen as his merry band of one hundred fifty men. All the band were outlaws, yet the country people loved them. No one who came to Jolly Robin for help ever went away with an empty hand. But Robin wasn't always an outlaw. This story will tell how he became one. When Robin was eighteen, with a strong body and bold heart, the Sheriff of Nottingham proclaimed a shooting match. A large barrel of ale would go to the best shot with a bow and arrow. When Robin heard the match, he said, I will go too, and draw my string, not only for the barrel of ale, but to win the smile of Maid Marian as well. The month was May, and flowers covered the meadow. Apple buds blossomed, and the cuckoo and lark could be heard in the hedge. The air was sweet, and Robin whistled as he thought of Maid Marian. As he walked through the forest at dawn, Robin suddenly came upon fifteen of the king's foresters, seated beneath the great oak tree. Each man was dressed in bright green, or Lincoln green, as it was called. They made a fine show, feasting on meat pie and foaming ale. One of them, with his mouth full, called out to Robin, Hello! Where are you going, my lad, with your bow and arrows? When Robin told them he was off to Nottingham Town to shoot for the prize, they all laughed loud. They called him a boasting infant and told him he had no chance of winning. That made Robin angry, for no lad likes to be teased. He boldly made a bet that he could bring down the best in a herd of deer, more than sixty yards away. He took his good strong bow made of yew wood and placed the tip at his instep. He strung it. He fitted a broad arrow onto the string and raised the bow, drawing back the grey goose feather to his ear. The next moment the bowstring rang, and the arrow sped like a hawk in the wind, killing the deer dead. Ha! cried Robin, with his hand on his hip. How do you like that shot, good fellows? All the foresters were filled with rage, for they had lost their bet. Not only that, Robin had killed one of the king's deer that was in their care. When the foresters did not answer, Robin looked at them grimly, turned on his heel, and strode away. His heart was bitter and angry. They had teased him, made a false bet with him, and cheated him. Now it would have been well if the fellow who had first spoken had left Robin alone, but he was drunk and angry about the lost bet. Suddenly, and without warning, he sprang to his feet and sent an arrow whistling after Robin. The arrow buzzed within three inches of Robin's head. Quickly he turned around and cried, You said I was no archer, but say now... Say so now again. Robin sent an arrow in return, and the forester fell with a cry. Before the others could move, Robin had disappeared into the forest. As he ran through the green wood, all the joy and brightness were gone from Robin's life. His heart was sick with sadness because he had killed a man. And so he came to live in the forest that was to be his home for many years to come, for he had become an outlaw. The Sheriff of Nottingham swore that he would bring Robin Hood to justice, not only because he wanted the two hundred pounds reward for Robin's capture, but also because the dead forester was related to him. But Robin Hood stayed hidden in Sherwood Forest for one year, gathering around him many other outlaws like himself. Some were wanted for hunting the king's deer in cold winter when they had no food. Some had been taxed so heavily they had no money to live. And some had been turned out of their farms, so that their land might be added to the king's property in Sherwood Forest. All had come to escape the unfair treatment they had been given, at the hands of the king. During that year, over a hundred strong yeomen gathered about Robin Hood, and chose him to be their leader and chief. They missed no chance to take from the rich and proud who had ruined them. To the poor folk, they lent a helping hand, and returned the money that had been unjustly taken from them. The people found they had nothing to fear from Robin and his outlaw band, so they began to tell many tales of the merry men of Sherwood Forest. These are the tales that I will tell to you now. <laughs>